Yo, what is up everyone? Are you ready for this? I'm ready for this. So DJ Mike K, spin the intro. It's the very curious news from around planet Earth with a super fantastic cover. Very curious news item, number one. Karma is coming for you, England. Karma is coming. Because you definitely did not try and play your best against Belgium, and it showed in your 1-0 loss today that looked more like a friendly than a proper World Cup game, which everyone knows was in an effort to finish second in the group so that you could have the easier half of the bracket in the knockout rounds and avoid facing Argentina or Portugal or France or Uruguay or Mexico or Brazil until the final, final, final game. So you can instead take on Colombia, uh, then the winner of Sweden, Switzerland, then the winner of most likely Spain and Croatia in the semifinals. So like always, I've got something to say about this. Have you ever been in a game where you had the lead late, so you start dicking around with the ball, the time waste a bit, because it feels like you're in complete control, and then out of nowhere you give up a goal and now it's tied, and you want all that time back that you were previously wasting? That for me is England right now. Okay, wait, that might not be the best metaphor of what I'm trying to say, but England is trying to manipulate the system to create a perfect scenario of making a dream run to the semifinals finals or final, instead of just going out and winning every single play, every single ball, every single game, every single whatever, just trying to win everything that's in front of them and then letting the chips fall where they may, but because they didn't do that against Belgium and took their foot off the gas, it just feels like they think they can turn it on whenever they want. And that feels pretty arrogant to me, especially since they haven't had their backs to the wall once all tournaments. So this decision to back off a bit against Belgium could come back and bite them John Square in the ass. And speaking of John Square, also known as Juan Cuadrado, he and his Colombian teammates have had their backs against the wall ever since they went down a man in the third minute of the first game against Japan. And actually, which continued after they lost one of their best players in James Rodriguez in the first 15 minutes of this third game. So they've had to fight and scratch to win their group but let's take away who the two teams are for a minute and just talk about them overall. Because I wanna know who you think has a better chance to win in the round of 16 between a team that's been battling it out for their survival for three straight games or the team that was completely dominant against lesser opposition in their first two games and then didn't really give a rat's ass in their last one. I know which one I'm picking. Very curious news item number two. Japan is in and Senegal is out due to the fair play rule. Yes, after losing to Colombia and Poland respectively today, Senegal and Japan finished with the same exact record, the same exact goal difference, and the same amount of goals for, which means it had to go to the next tiebreaker, which is the fair play rule, which is basically the team with the least amount of yellow and red cards goes through, and the other one goes home. And thankfully for Japan, they got less of everything, while Senegal, who was Africa's last chance to have a team in the round of 16 is sent packing. Which, because it's the first time this rule has ever been used, it feels extremely harsh. But at least as a team, you have control over this tiebreaker. In the past, if it had gotten to this situation, they would have flipped a coin to decide who goes on to the knockout rounds and who goes home. And that feels a lot less fair in comparison. Anyway, congrats to Senegal on a great showing. I thought they had a lot to be proud of in this tournament, and I fully expect them to be favorites to win the next Africa Cup of Nations. And as for Japan and their situation, well, you see everyone, being nice does have its benefits. Very curious news item number three. The group stages are over, which means tomorrow is the first day off of the World Cup. Woohoo! So I've got a special something dropping tomorrow and I really encourage you to watch it, especially the end where I challenge you to something. I know, stop, what am I saying? I've said too much already, so just, just be on the lookout for that. Also, it's been a while, so let's do a little mini previews and predictions by talking about the two big games on Saturday, France versus Argentina and Uruguay versus Portugal. And we're gonna start with France and Argentina first, and this fun fact. France haven't lost to a team from South America in their last eight World Cup matches. And to take that one step further, they haven't even given up a goal to a South American team in their last seven. The last time they did that was in 1986 against Brazil, and the last time they lost was against Argentina back in 1978. But that was then, and this is now. And for me, this is gonna be France's first real test of the tournament. And sure, they beat two solid countries and drew one against another in the group stages, but none of their performances looked inspired, especially their boring ass 0-0 draw against Denmark, and I want all 90 of those minutes of my life back, which is a big disappointment for me and everyone else, I'm sure, because we know they're capable of so much more, so, We'll see if facing Leo Messi in Argentina lights a fire under them 
to play to their best because if they play to their best, they're unstoppable. Unless, of course, Messi does something that he's never done before, and that's score a goal in the knockout rounds of the World Cup. And if their manager, Jorge Sampaioli, if he's still in charge, plays the same lineup in back-to-back -back games since he took charge of the team because I think a little continuity could go a long way into them getting into a rhythm because when I watch Argentina now, it never looks like they've ever played together before. So my prediction, well, on paper, France collectively have the better players, but they have a very defensive-minded coach and they're coming off a subpar performance against Denmark, whereas with Argentina, they're coming off a relatively average performance as well, but it had a great emotional confidence and momentum building finish. So I like Argentina to pull this one out in penalties. And then it's Uruguay versus Portugal, which is the third all-time meeting between the two countries, but the first time in the World Cup. However, since most of these players for both of these countries play for clubs in Europe, either as teammates or league opponents, they're going to be very familiar with each other and with how they got here. So like with Uruguay, they cruise through the easiest group, giving up zero goals, getting maximum points, and scoring all five of their goals from set pieces. And yes, how's that for a fun fact? Whereas with Portugal, they made it exciting, as Portugal does, by escaping the group with a nervy draw against Iran in the last game to finish second. Also, like Messi, Ronaldo has yet to score a goal in the knockout rounds in a World Cup. But I expect that to change, because the guy seems destined to have a big run in this tournament. Also times two, I expect Portugal to defend well on set pieces, thereby negating the biggest strength of Uruguay this tournament. However, Luis Suarez, the toothy magician, is going to find a way to score because that's what he does. And it's going to end 1-1. And then Portugal is going to win in penalties. Yes, I'm making two bold calls for these predictions because I think they're both going to be tight and because I want to see Argentina versus Portugal in the quarterfinals. Messi versus Ronaldo, GOAT versus GOAT. Make this happen, gods of the beautiful game, also known as the video assistant referee. Anyway, that is it. That is all I got, but now it is your turn. Did England make a mistake by playing like they did, or do you think it was smart? Which could very well be if they make it to the semifinals, and then of course I'll eat my words. Also, do you like the fair play tiebreaker? I don't mind it. And finally, who is winning on Saturday? Argentina or France or Portugal or Uruguay? Let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And I'll catch you tomorrow. Later. <laughs>